photographer. Uh, welcome, Ron. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Glad to be here. Before I begin, I just have a, a couple of things I need to talk about. Uh, first is uh, COVID safety. Uh, just to let everybody at home know that we take it very seriously. So we are here without masks, but we're not only separated, we've got uh, fans blowing on us and air filters and open windows. So uh, we take extra precautions at everything that we do. Uh, during this conversation, uh, we encourage everybody at the, <coughs> either the bottom or the top of your screen, there's a chat feature. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys if you have questions for Ron. We'll be taking questions at the end of our conversation. So just click on the chat feature and then uh, where it says to host, you can type in your question and it'll come to us and we'll take field some questions. Lastly, I want to say a big thank you to all those people who donated to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. In these tough times of COVID, uh, our programming has definitely changed. So we really appreciate the support of our donors. So thank you very much. We really appreciate that. So Ron, I'm thrilled to have you here today. Glad to be here. Uh, we had an exhibit of yours a couple of years back now. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it was, it was a great exhibit. I still swirl it around in my mind. Yeah. I would love to start at where I usually start, uh, which is uh, how, did, how did you begin your life in the arts? So I really didn't begin my life in the arts, actually. I began my life in journalism. Sure. So, um, you know, I mean, I was into, um, and still am, into news and photo new, uh, photojournalism. And uh, when I was in, in uh, college, actually when I was in high school, I worked for the high school newspaper and had a really great uh, counselor who got me into uh, my, my college. And uh, I... Um, photograph for the for the newspaper there and the yearbook and then uh, took all the classes in photography wasn't really interested in the writing courses and sort of had to beg my way out of those <laughs> and dr oh god i can't remember anyway if, if, he's, if he's out there listening i don't don't <laughs> just, just don't hear me yeah but anyway um um so anyway so and then i went to work uh, right out of college for for a small newspaper in oklahoma and then went from there after a couple of years to uh, a newspaper in missouri mm -hmm. a couple of years there i went to the philadelphia inquirer in 1983 and was there for 32 years did you move because they were job opportunities mm -hmm. or did you so decide to come to philadelphia mm -hmm. no 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 I, I i moved because i wanted to work at a big newspaper i mean that was my yeah goal you know 32 years a long time in the inquiry so a lot of people know who you are the <laughs> name rings a bell it was, to a lot of people oh yeah well if it doesn't they probably see my pictures you know, know all the people that worked at the paper you know right saw our pictures so at that time after 32 years in the inquiry then you decide to shift well no actually <laughs> oh so, okay. more so to the story what, so what happened was i guess maybe 20 years into it um I, you know, I have to say, I started sort of, well, things were ch changing in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the newspaper industry. Um, I mean, what I loved was long-term documentary photography. That's, that was my dr goal. And, mm -hmm. and I still love that, you know, and, and, and uh, when the Inquirer had a Sunday magazine and we could work for on these long-term projects and you'd see the, you know, really nice glossy page. Yep. And, you know, and then even the broadsheet, we'd do these big stories and things. I love that. I love telling stories with images. And um, when that started to dwindle, to dwindle and the news hole started to shrink and, you know, I, 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 I needed to, I needed another outlet for my photography. So I started playing around with, with, um, I, it, in fact, I wouldn't even say it was art photography then. I just started playing around with, with experimental things with mm -hmm. photography and, um, I uh, got a four by five and started mm -hmm. making images with that and then started a series where I would uh, go out and photograph at night. And at that time I was working the night shift for the paper mm -hmm. and I would drive around and I would sort of take notes on things that I'd like to go back and re-photograph. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go back and re-photograph re re them with my four by five. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had this accident in the dark room uh, because at that time I was printing everything, you know, yep. on, uh, on uh, fiber paper. And, uh, had this accident where I put the paper in upside down and, but I got this really interesting sort of effect, almost like a pictorialist sort mm -hmm. of, and I, and I was kind of grooving on the pictorialist then anyway. And mm -hmm. I, I was just kind of learning about art. Right. Photography. Right. 
And um, so, and the pictorialist was who I sort of landed on. So I started making these images that were reminiscent of that period. Mm -hmm. And um, and then one thing led to another, and um, I won a couple of awards. And uh, Sandy Webster, mm -hmm. uh, Sandy Webster Gallery, yep. picked me up as one of their artists, and I was mm -hmm. with her for 15 years. So this all started with a happy accident. It was a majorly <laughs> that was the happiest of accidents. <laughs> For those of you at home, that's actually an art term, a happy accident. Yeah, right. It yeah. really is. It's it is. We talk it's, about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. I love that story. And, and you know, I was going to save this question for later, but uh, I would love to hear you talk about how your, your experiences as a journalist photographer has influenced the work, that, the fine artwork that you mm -hmm. do now. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you see that? Yeah, I mean, I think I still tend to think in sort of this linear fashion. Mm -hmm. Like, I, my, I still think, I remember when I was in grad school, so I went back to grad school. Um, another little nugget of the, my story <laughs> is that after I left, so I was, I was um, uh, adjunct at Swarthmore for, for a few years and while I was working at the Inquirer, and then I got an offer from them to, uh, to come on faculty, but mm -hmm they needed an MFA. Yeah. And so, um, so I, you know, I, I went to school at UArts mm -hmm. at a pretty advanced age mm -hmm. <laughs> and realized that I knew nothing about art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I thought I did, but yeah, but so that was a big learning curve. And then, um, so then I started just dabbling with different things, but I remember, um, um, uh, um, Eileen Neff yep. came in, she was one of my, uh, Crits, crit, uh, crit, uh, crit, crit, crit people. Yeah. And she came in and she said, oh, so you're a surrealist or uh, not a surrealist, but a serialist. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even know what that means. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, Catching up. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I realized that, yeah, I mean, I do yeah. think in terms of series. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think that like one image should connect with another image. And yeah. I know I realized that that's not necessarily the way that art photography is sort of position itself now? Yes, yeah, no, that's true. You know, I find that most of the people who sit in this chair uh, so far, you could describe in that same vein, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, I would say that being as a serialist happens more frequently for painters and cr even craftspeople and mm -hmm. those sorts of, so the photography, I can see there could be this little bit of a, yeah unusual shift yeah but i think that's what makes you stand out i think that's what makes your yeah. work stand out so so yeah so that's the way i you know that's kind of the way i think and so, then, so you taught it so you're at uarts uh -huh. you're, and you're still there at uarts yeah oh god no man. okay so you, you moved on <laughs> all right good that, i'm that, trying to get the time grad right. school is a whole other thing okay. well, i don't even want to get into that <laughs> so where is your studio now my studio is at my house okay it's at my home and um so uh, when I was in grad school, um, I thought that I was going to do something more sort of in line with, with you know, photojournalism or straight right. photography, but um, it just wasn't in the cards for the way that the faculty saw my work, yeah. I think. But, you know, and, and, and I bucked against it for a long time. I mean, I, yeah, art school, I had a few <laughs> choice words for it. But, it, it did really push me in a direction that I would have never yeah. gone in yeah. before, which is, you know, the stuff I'm doing now and thinking about ways on how to, um, to make art. When, so, I mean, my work right now centers around my, my dad was a photographer mm -hmm. in the forties and fifties. And for the longest time I had, a, you know, the box of, images that he had printed and also all of his negatives and i and i thought you know at some point in time i'm going to do something with these things i mm -hmm. thought maybe i would do like a group you know father son exhibition and my, right. my dad's passed away for a while now but i thought we'd do something like that but then i started looking at these images and and uh, and i was in grad school and i needed to do something in the studio and i had no idea what to do in a studio mm -hmm. none mm -hmm. in fact when i got my first studio at uarts i put a rug in there, mm -hmm. I had a table, because my idea of a studio was that you sell stuff out of it. You know, <laughs> right. that's, I mean. I, I had the privilege of actually going to that studio, so I remember seeing the rug. Oh, did you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was, 
really embarrassed. It, it was no, it was clean. It's, <laughs> it was, know, all studios are different. Which I, you know, I'm, I'm curious about the, the studio that you have in your home. Yeah, is it sufficient for you? It's, it's. I don't think you ever have an. A, a, you know, never have I don't think room. your studio, yeah. your studio is not. You know, it's never big enough. It's big enough for some of the things that I need to do. Okay. Um, you know, when I was at UArts, I had a really nice studio. I mean, yeah. it's like I was able to big build these gigantic constructions and then re rephotograph them with with my dad's work. Right. But um, but it's big enough, you know. And and so you you learn to work with what you have. You know, you uh -huh. so I've, I've scaled down a bit. So now I'm I'm working kind of smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, on a on a on a scale that that's that I can that's conducive to to my space. Do you ever have people visit your studio? Uh, I've had a couple of Zoom visits actually. Okay. Oh, which really? In COVID, yeah. Which was <laughs> really? That's, yeah. I wouldn't even have thought about that. Yeah. Know? That's I great. Mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's it's kind of a wreck in there. Yeah. But um, well, that's a studio. <laughs> <laughs> I teach out of that, you know. Okay. So, so I do all my my Zoom calls in there, and uh, it's this is a multi-use space. It's a multi-use space, okay. and a lot of my work is on the computer too. You yeah. Know? So I do you print there? Or do you farm everything out? I, I print, no, I don't. I, I, I send out, if for uh, folks that want to, you know, buy my work, right. I, I send it out to actually up, to, up the road. Do you, do you ever proof stuff though? Do you have, do you have, I have a small a printer? That I have you... a small proof. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that helpful? It's, well, you know, it is and it isn't because the ultimate print is what comes out of Mike and Janine's studio at Profile Studio right. in, in Chestnut Hill. Right. So my ultimate print is that print. So I can kind of print and, you know, get it close, but, mm -hmm. you know, but what comes out of their machine is what is, is the final word. So well, I'm curious about the equipment that you do use. I, I happen to catch you at a, I think a unique time where you really started to use your phone. Yeah. A lot. More. I still use my phone a lot. So what? What's your what's your go to piece of equipment? Is it your phone? You know, it's it... like it's like what I tell my students or anybody asks me. Your go to piece of equipment is what you have on you at the time. Have on you. You know. Do you usually so, carry a camera around? With I don't. You, you don't. So, I don't. But you but you do because you always have your phone on you. Probably. I have my phone. You know. Right. And actually, like on my Instagram feed, I don't I don't know if any of those pictures were shot with a ca actual camera. Yeah. They were all shot with my with my phone. We were just up at Storm King uh, two weeks ago, and I posted a couple of pictures from there because you know I had my you know and the thing is is that you know I so the camera that I have now I kind of use that more as a four by five camera actually because okay. it gives me such a gigantic file right and um, I I you know I I haven't found anything that I really want to photograph with that camera yet. When was the last time you used film? Uh, well, you know, I'm teaching an analog class now. Okay. So I actually shot it's some funny, stuff. It's, it's and, a class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually shot some stuff and processed it. And, okay. And, uh, and, and, uh, and half my students are remote. Yeah. So I sent them equipment and chemicals and everything. Right. So they're, they're processing all their stuff. So, and we're, we're using some new chemicals. So I need to do some, needed to do some testing with it. So yeah, so I shot some not too long ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's great. Keep your hand. Yeah, I mean, I'm used to it. You know, yeah. I I I I love film. I mean, I yeah. love I love yeah. black and white. I love film. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, it's also handy to have digital. So it surprised me when I first found that you you told me that you used your phone, and I was sort of stunned because oh, yeah. I because I I guess maybe it was a bias. I just automatically assumed that you were old school film guy and it, oh, that, no. was, that was it. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. I mean, I, I went to, uh, so I have had a collector downtown and he, uh, they had, they were expanding their offices and they had some of my work up in their offices and they called me up and they said, we, you know, we'd really like to buy some of your work, some more of your work for, for our expansion. And so can you bring a portfolio down? And literally I hadn't shot anything with my phone, you know? So I had them print up a portfolio uh -huh. of 16 by 20. You know, you get a nice 16 by 20. Oh, you know, yeah or it wasn't 16 by 20, it was like 16 by 16 square. And um, so I took it down and they were like, oh, you know, we really like this, blah, blah, blah. And they said, oh, we we're gonna buy, you know, so they think they bought a few prints. And so the owner of the company came down mm -hmm. and he said, you know, you know, the work that you do with your four by five, you know, I, I told my wife, you know, I really need to go out and get this camera, get this uh -huh. really di nice digital <laughs> camera. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> Don't pop that bubble. <laughs> well, not I did actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did said, you get paid it. first? <laughs> I, 
I said, well, you know, these are shot with my cell phone. Uh, yeah. and, he, and he was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little, I'm curious to know, so your photographer, I was talking about, you know, your go-to camera, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that photography is your go-to medium. Yeah. But have you ever played with other mediums? I'm taking a ceramics class right now. Really? You yeah. know, we have ceramics here. I the know. Center. You need to take our class. I probably do. We do a great Raku workshop, so <laughs> that's just a little plug. <laughs> so you're doing ceramics, and how long have you been doing something like yeah, that? I've just couple just, of weeks but I'm going to extend it I mean I you know okay. I found it it was one of the things I've always wanted to do and mm -hmm. you know I have to uh, so at school we have to crit our senior students mm -hmm. and some of them are doing uh, ceramics mm -hmm. and I just you know it's it's I can I know what I like I, I, I can talk about the way the light hits and all but I have never put my hands in clay you know it's great isn't it and uh, <laughs> god i love it and and uh sid carpenter if you're out there listening you know <laughs> she is my inspiration okay. because her work is just unbelievable That's and great um and so i've been playing around with it and yeah. just loving it and actually my wife and i just signed up for another extended thing we're at, okay we're at cheltenham Arkansas. okay all right but i'll maybe get you, we'll, I'll get you we'll, come we'll, back we'll, we'll come over here, here. Yeah. Sucked over i here. got some great teachers yeah <laughs> you're gonna love it so yeah well the only you know thing i will give you a warning though that you will run out of space real quick yeah uh, you think your studio is crowded now oh yeah you know become a potter and, oh, i know, you know i know, it's I know it's, well would there, are there any other mediums that you know and, and i guess what i'm kind of digging at is when when i had the uh, fun t day where I came to your studio at that particular time you were working on the, the I think the beginning is of this series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you were um, copying and cutting and creating that and I was wondering like is collage creeping into the it, it creeps in and out you okay. know I mean it comes in and out and, and it depends on what the image needs you know yeah. like some of these things started out as collage. I mean, I was doing collage on glass. Yeah. I was, um, you know, one, one part of this, this collection of images with my dad's work is all glass mm -hmm. on, on, that sits on little shelves. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, you know, I, I think, you know, it's funny because when I was at Storm King, I was walking around and I, there, was a, there was a sculpture there and it just like hit me. It's like, whoa, that's, because I have all this glass that I've been playing with, you know, and mounting images on different ways. But I've always thought about them just sitting on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, no, they need to go. Mm -hmm. They can <laughs> sit on top of each other, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that sculpture there just really sent me in a whole other direction. So I got to, you know, so, so I'm, I'm doing that. I mean, I'm working on a couple of projects now that, you know. So I'm, the other thing is I'm working on my, this series of images that i'd made on black cowboys um right i remember you telling me that the start when you started first yeah started that. when i yeah. first yeah i started it and it's just never really kind of let go i yeah. mean i started it like 25 years ago yeah and it's it's just one of those things it just keeps rolling and rolling, rolling and rolling, rolling. and so uh, what i really want to do with that is do a book on that yeah. so i've been re-copying uh, those images with my big with my nikon yeah, this okay. nikon that it gives me a gigantic file so i've been copying images they're all slides copying those slides with my camera to get this really nice image so okay. what i want to do is do an exhibit in a book uh-huh um but you know so that's just been that has been you're evolving i mean that's yeah like but like most artists and i can see that in your work too yeah. I, mean, I mean even from the limited number of things that i've seen I, I can i can see your work and it's yeah it's got that twinkle of like nope keep going it's not satisfying. oh yeah i mean you, you never, know you're sort of never, moving on yeah uh so Looking back, not not your career working for the papers, but sort of your years now uh, working as a fine artist, um, what would you say is the, the, the biggest difference between the works that you first started to make and the works that you're doing now? Is, mm -hmm. is it, do, you, do you find it's the, the same thing or... or <sighs> You know, it's, How it's, do you feel about it's, making them? It's or? so funny because like the fine art stuff was so intertwined with the journalism thing, you know, because I was, mm -hmm. I was working at the Inquirer and I was showing at Woodmere and I was right. had work at PMA and, you know, so 
it was, it was just sort of this mix of, and I was just playing around with all, I mean, at one point I wasn't even using a camera. I was using a scanner to mm -hmm. make images, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was just, I was just interested in image making. Mm -hmm. So when you say, has my work as a fine artist changed? I mean, yeah, it's, it's evolved into too many, probably too many different directions, mm -hmm. you know? Is it easier for you now or harder for you? It's much, well, this is the hardest project I've ever, this is really twisted my mind around. Okay. This, this has really been hard. In isn't, fact- Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like picking up my camera and I like making pictures, you know, but this, but having to conceptualize image and then build an image oh, yeah. and then photograph it. Uh -huh. And it's scary. It's really scary. I have to say it's, it's been risking really scary. more, but the rewards are greater. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. You know, well, I can but, say that as a viewer too, like, yeah. you know, I, I personally love really hard artwork anyway. You yeah. Know, the stuff that you got to look at year after year before yeah. you just, oh my gosh, look at that. I didn't realize I you can sort of put that stuff in it. And yeah. I see that in your work. Uh, I want to talk about your process. Um, so when you're working, so say you work on a, on a you're going to have a series or whatnot. How much of that is pre-planned and how much of it is, say, experimentation? Uh, well, the way I'm working now, I would say it's like 110% experimentation. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't, like, like I said, I mean, I have no idea where this is going. Right. I have no idea. I mean, But it wasn't always like that. No, it was, no. When, if I, say, well, say if I were shooting a documentary project, it will say like the Black Cowboy Project. I mean, I knew, I didn't, I, you know, like the great thing about documentary is you never know where it's going to go, but you know it's going to go somewhere. Yeah. You know, it's, you know that you're out there, you're telling a story. It's kind of like you're writing a novel, but you don't know right. how the novel's going to end, you know. You, so th that's what I love about documentary work, because you just, you just hang on to your camera and it's going to take you where it wants to take you right. in, within the story. But this is a whole other thing. This is something where, okay, I've made it. Well, I mean, we were just talking about this image here. This image has had so many iterations, you know, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's gone into, um, so this image actually isn't printed on the paper. It's actually burned into the paper mm -hmm. uh, with a laser printer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the image is called the test. And what it re refers to is the, is the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, brown bag test that that mm. blacks had were right. subjected to you know mm. and if you if your skin color was lighter than a brown mm. bag you had a certain position in society right. blah 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 but i wanted to burn this image into the paper because i wanted i, I just that violent act of burning i think mm -hmm. is is more significant than just painting it on with mm -hmm. ink mm -hmm. you know because I, this this is indelible. I mean, it is there. That is there. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fade. It's right. not going to go, you know, it's, it's burned in. And it refers to Jim Crow, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and look at where Jim Crow is, yeah. has met, how it's manifested itself over the years. And even to, to today, today I, yeah. you know, it's so more relevant than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all this work pertains, it, 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 it looks at the time my dad lived in the forties and fifties yeah. in, in this Jim Crow state. And then it, it moves forward to the day, right. you know, so it's thinking about that time span and, um, and how to make imagery that pertains to that without being kitschy or tried or, right. you know, but trying to really think about it in a serious way and make art that, um, that, that hopefully gets at some of those nuggets of it, you know, and every piece that I've made in this series gets at a particular part of, of, of mm -hmm. that, of, of, you know, the whole Jim Crow era. Before we talk about this <laughs> piece in particular, I'd love to have you talk a little bit about the origins of this series. You know, mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to show the work mm -hmm. here. And I, I, if you could just talk a, a little bit about when you first started this, you were given essentially a box of yeah well you know um so yeah so like i was saying before it was it uh, it started in art school okay because i needed i needed to do something in art i i couldn't you know <laughs> they would basically tell me okay go in your studio and make art and I, was like, <laughs> right. I don't know how to make art i go out in the field and make art right. you know i don't so, so i had to figure out something to do with in that studio yeah. and so i had this 
all this, you know, my dad's work. And so I thought, well, I got to figure out something to do with that. And so I started reading bell hooks and Toni Morrison, you know, I started in, in, in thinking about those more from a theoretical sort of perspective as opposed to just great literature. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and thinking about, you know, the, how does that, how, do, how, how does my dad's work fit into those experiences, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the bell hooks, uh, essay in in our glory just really resonated with mm. me you know i mean there's a line in there where she said my dad was a picture taking man mm. and i was just like that just sent chills down yeah my, you know I can imagine and 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 thinking about how you know at the time blacks could not go to museums you yeah. know so they curated their own exhibitions in their house by putting their hanging pictures on the wall and mm -hmm. putting them on the mantle you know so so that's so that really, it really got me thinking about how my dad's work, how I can make work that speaks to that time mm -hmm. and, and move it forward in some way. Well, I love the fact that you were able to take a lot of those photographs and, and repurpose them, but in a way that it now, to me, they were telling two stories. So it still told your father's story, right. but you were able to encase it in this other. And sometimes it would just be because of the way that you would either manipulate the image. Sometimes it was the scale of it. Yeah. So you had some, some pieces that yeah. were and really actually, like. The, that show was a very experimental show because that was the very first time. I just thought, man, I got, I have this big print. Let's make something big, you know? It was great. It was wonderful. So, and you know, I haven't made anything that big. Well, I have one that's that big, but it's not. And it's, yeah. actually it's in a big frame more than yeah. anything. But it's, uh, but I haven't made anything big to hang on the wall. I don't know if these will get that big. Actually, I made one big one from one image. Uh -huh. And, uh, and over time it shrunk. <laughs> it's gotten smaller, <laughs> okay. but I started, you know, so I was, I was making these images before and they, and uh, I was mounting them on Dibon, which is this, yeah. you know, really firm, uh, rigid background. And they had this really contemporary look. Yeah. And I thought, man, I don't think, you know, there, there was just something wrong with it. I just, yeah. Yeah, you know. And so I had a show coming up and I'd ordered all these contemporary frames, black frames and everything. Yeah. And so I was in a thrift store. Um, <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm, I'm a thrift I know store. exactly <laughs> where this is going. I mean, I can see where this is going. Yeah. Right and so I was in this thrift store and, um, and, and uh, I started looking around at frames. My wife was with me and I was like, man, look at all these great frames. You know, yeah. I said, how would my pictures look in those, you know? Yeah. And so I, I looked at this one and it was square and yeah. it, it just seemed to, everything just seemed to fit. Yeah. And so I called up the frame company and said, have you guys made the frames yet? And they said, no. I said, don't. You right. know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it saved me like a couple of thousand dollars just for frames yeah. for these things, you know? Yeah. But, but I think that the images, the way they live in these vintage frames yeah, now yeah it just seems right to me yeah you know it just seems right i'm so. always fascinated by artists and who would choose a frame nowadays you know most galleries they'll, they'll frame it to suit the client sort of a thing yeah. you know? but you know when you look at say like you know david hockney with his painted frames right. or even like <clears throat> impressionists uh you know Gauguin wanted all his stuff to be framed with these big white frames with mm -hmm. these white and there's only one in existence because everybody who bought them right. switched them out into these ugly yeah, gilt yeah, things yeah, right. kind of a thing <laughs> oh it's more expensive that right, way right. but it does I, I agree with you it, it's yeah it's like they say it's like a cover for a book it sets yeah. the tone when you're just about to start yeah it, it does leave me to one of those questions I, I I'm dying to ask <laughs> is, do, do people respond to your work the way you expect that they respond? Like when people talk to you about that, like, so you put up something new, mm -hmm. you know, are you, are you expecting what they say or are you? No, and I think that's the great thing about it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, so I tell my students, you know, just to, to when you make art, you can make it with all the intentions in the world. Right. And once you release it out to the world, it belongs to the world, right. you know? <laughs> so I remember one time I was at Sandy Webster's gallery and this is when I was doing my uh, scannerless work. And, I, and everything was sort of, it, it, it related to the Hubble Space Telescope, you know. <laughs> so, it, but I was, it was called, it was, yeah, I know. I was, it was, it was, um, it was called World in a Grain of Sand. So I was taking these really small things and then scanning them. I had this really high-end scanner at the time and scanning them up to these really large files. So I could make mm -hmm. these things gigantic. So they look like space. Mm -hmm. In fact, one, one is actually egg white. It's called, um, 
oh god it's the galaxy uh, da, 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 da. it's something gal I, I forgot my name of my own word <laughs> but if you, andromeda I don't yeah know. no 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 it's it's uh it, it'll come to me but anyway but if you look it up and it's in the collection google has oh, curated yeah. it within <laughs> all the galaxies okay. of galaxies you've, the, you've the, made the big i know and I, so i took a picture of it and i said this is this is all i need you that'll know? go on your resume yeah, but right. uh but anyway so i was in this it was at sandy webster's gallery and i was looking at somebody was looking at one of the pictures it was kind of like this big orb and she was crying oh, and i was wow. like wow and so she didn't know who i was and i walked yeah. up and i said are you okay and she said this just and she started talking about it and i'm like i would have never in a million years yeah. thought that that picture would have you know brought up such emotions so. your your show you know i asked that question i was interested to hear what you said because you know we've done a lot of shows here and i love you know talking to the the, the audiences and how they respond and the the comments that people were telling me about what they thought your show was was so wide and there's such a variety right and uh you know, but like maybe only half of them were touching on subjects that you had taught. The, the other half were, yeah, it was crazy. You know, <laughs> yeah. talk, it, yeah. was just, it was wonderful right. to hear that. I mean, you can't, you can't, you know, nail it down to right. it, this is just, this is all it's going to be. Right. So it was, it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, before I, I uh, move on, I want to remind everybody um, we are <coughs> taking questions. If you do have any questions for Ron, uh, please use the chat feature in the Zoom and send your questions to the host. Uh, so let's move to this particular piece. Um, I was thrilled to see this. I, I have seen this image before. And for those who are just joining us, uh, let's talk about who this is. Okay. That was fascinating. When <laughs> yeah. You well, so one of my, so one of the uh, limitations I set to myself was that I did not want to know who these people were. So this big box of images, I took them out and put them all over my studio. And but I didn't want to know who they were because I didn't, I mean, some of them I knew. I mean, you know, my, he had a bunch of pictures of my, my mother in there, so I knew who she was. But the others, I, I didn't want to know who they were because I didn't want to, it, you know, it, 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 it was just, it was just easier to work with it, this anonymous picture of this anonymous person you know <laughs> so I started working with these images and I just really fell in love with this image I just I mean there was just something about her it's face striking. that was just yeah. I don't know I mean it just brought up all sorts of you know you had mentioned Mona Lisa and mm -hmm. you know one side of her face if you cover up she's one side eye. she's got that she's just got that gaze you know but she, it's almost like she's sizing you up in a way and uh, so I played with this in all different kinds of ways and, uh, but I didn't want to know who she was. And so my uh, cousin actually came up to visit one time. And uh, so she started, she, she started writing on the back of who they were, you know, mm -hmm. because she, she actually wanted some of the images, you know. And, mm -hmm. and so um, and I was like, well, don't tell me who they are because I, I don't want to. <laughs> and she says, Too late. and then she said, well, there's Aunt Juanita. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined it. That's great. <laughs> So this is my aunt, my aunt Juanita. And uh, how many times have you used her this image? Because I've seen this oh, I've, I've, right I've used it in a yeah. lot of different ways. You know, I've seen it larger. It's, it was it huge on. at one point. Yeah. I had it projected. It, one image, I had light projecting through it, and all different kinds of things. So, um, what's uh, striking about this one for me is I, I love the scale. Is you know, this is about life size yeah. scale. So yeah. it's and it's not so big that it forces the viewer across the room. You really want to come up and have yeah. a, a dialogue with yeah. this picture. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. And, uh, and literally it was because I found this frame. Yeah. You know? yeah sometimes uh, well, I, you're not the first artist that will find a frame and make a piece <laughs> of artwork that, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, but it, it just fit, you know. And one of the things I will say about this project too is that the materials I'm working with and, and, and understanding the materials because you know i would i would make these things and um the materials just didn't do what i thought they were going to do mm -hmm. you know so th that's the other part about that's the other thing that's kind of scary about this is that um i'm having to alter the way that i thought materials worked mm -hmm. and um and that's been a big learning curve mm -hmm. you know 
So just thinking about like plastic on glass or paint on glass or mm -hmm. how, you know, how do all these things work? And, or if I'm going to put paper on glass and it's going to do something I didn't expect it to do. Mm -hmm. But another time, you know, it's of these happy accidents that happen. So I've always found the most interesting artists. I always use the term learning curve. Yeah. It just, you know, it means that they're willing to like, okay, I did that, but what, what if, you know, yeah. that's sort of the next stage on this. Yeah. You don't addition your works. I addition my photographs. My, okay. So like, so the Black Cowboys do come in additions. These are not going to come in additions because right. I have no idea what's going to happen with them. Yeah. And I don't think it needs to be addition. Yeah. I think it's special the way it These is. These are all unique yeah. pieces and they're going to be, because yeah, I don't know what's going to happen to her next. Yeah. I don't know what frame I'm going to find, uh -huh. you know, I, I don't know. So now, now I'm going to be like hunting for frames for you. Just, <laughs> yeah. like, hey, Ron, quick, get over here. I got, I got a great deal. I'd like to move on to some, sure. we got a question here. Um, how, if all, if at all, has your recent experience with clay changed your photography? You know, I, it hasn't changed it yet, Okay, but I can see, how it might in the future. Uh -huh. um, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny thinking about 3D and 2D uh -huh. and how do those two things intermingle. So yeah, I, I, see, I see something down the line. You know, I see something down the line maybe with uh, some clay and alternative process, maybe with... So I've got a workshop for you, one that we do here. It's yeah. you, you use image transfers onto ceramics. Right, right. Uh, ceramic. That's what I was... You need to take... An another reason to come to ceramics <laughs> at Allen's Lane Art Center. That's fantastic. Uh, Mark, do we have any other questions? No. Okay. Um, I am curious to know, as an artist, I often find that all the artists that I, I speak with tend to obviously look at artwork and look at other artists' artwork. Sometimes it's for stealing ideas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just for relaxation or just because it's interesting. Who do you look at? Art from, as far as artwork goes? Sure. Um, well, I haven't really been to any play just because you know, we're in COVID. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I look at a lot of photography, um, um, you know. Do you have any favorite photographers? Yeah. Um, oh, man, there, there's. Like there's, the big guys, like a Cartier yeah. Bresson? Or, yeah, well, I mean, there's Cartier Bresson. Uh, there's, um, um, I'm blanking, I'm blanking out on names now. <laughs> it's the COVID. It's, it's not, they're not coming to me. But yeah, but. Um, Do you look at non-photography too? Like, do you like sculpture mm -hmm. or well? I try and look at. I try and look at look at um, look at everything. You know, just to just to be informed. Um, those names don't necessarily stick in my head as well as photography. And right now, the photography's names aren't aren't sticking <laughs> well either, which is really remember. embarrassing. Because I, I mean, I, and the funny thing is, I can see the images as plain as day. Right. Um, I do the and, same uh, thing. I can only remember images. Yeah, you ask me about that, but, but yeah, but I but I I do have lots of favorite photographers that I look at. I mean, I I mean, I wouldn't say she's my favorite photographer, but I just joined Cindy Sherman's Instagram feed uh, yeah. today. It's a great feed. I'm on. because it's so <laughs> the stuff she's doing now is just so bizarre. It is, isn't it? But um, but yeah, but I mean, there's you know, and I and particularly like uh, black and white photography. I mean, that's what I'm really drawn to. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Yeah. I have another question. Uh, hi, Ron. Uh, do you have an urge to make a photo documentary type for your art? To have an urge? Um, yeah, I definitely have an urge. Okay. You know? I mean, you know, it's like, if we're, I guess the thing is, it's like, what would I do photo, what would I do? You know, like, yeah. what would I, like the great thing about working at the paper was that I had a constant source of, of just being out in the world and discovering things, you know? Mm -hmm. And now that I'm not doing that anymore, it's like, I would have loved to have been down covering the riots mm -hmm. and covering all this, the things that have been going on mm -hmm. lately. Unfortunately, I had a need I had some knee surgery oh. back in the in the summer. Right. 
and I just couldn't, I couldn't put myself in that position because I could, I yeah. mean, you know, dragging a bum right. leg around would right. not be, would not be fun. Isn't that a hat trick? Let's see, a riot, COVID, and a bum leg. Right. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, but yeah, but I would really, I, you know, and, and some of the work that the, the Inquirer photographers have been doing, you know, yeah. I look on their, on their, uh, on their, uh, on the uh, inquire website and it's just amazing to me you know and i just think oh no no it, it, i just have such a pain for that yeah um and, you know because you want to be in the midst of all this stuff but as far as like doing a documentary project i mean right now i'm i'm really focused on getting this black cowboy project organized i mean i have uh, this this summer uh, i scanned in seven thousand images and uh I, it, I put so many images in lightroom that my computer just it just basically <laughs> just shut down so I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm really working on that and to try and get that organized. Do you have a timeline for something like that? I would really like to get something going by, you know, I would really, I would, I would hope to get it going by maybe next year. Okay. I have a show coming up in, at Oklahoma Contemporary with this stuff. Oh, fantastic. So I have to, I have to work on uh, some of these things. Right. And the word is that they may be interested in the black cowboy stuff for the okay. following year. Right. So I'd have to get that done. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of balls in the air right now. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, trying to get everything done and funded and right. all yeah. that. So, well, that actually, it does lead me to really my final question, which is, uh, so you're here in Philadelphia. If people are interested in your work, you know, how, how do they go about finding you? Is it? Yeah. Well, so, um, I mean, you can go to my website, okay. rontarverphotographs.net. At least I remembered that. Good. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then there's some, some folks that have been uh, handling my work locally. Susanna Gold has okay. been really great. great. And then I have a, a uh, gallery in New York that, uh, that handles some of the work, okay. uh, Robin Rice Gallery in New York. Right. Well, that's, you know, one of the things I always love to do is to, you know, encourage our audiences out there to please go to Ron's website. I know you might not necessarily be able to see this image perfectly, but hopefully maybe we can get you to have post an image of this on your website. So we encourage you to go to his website, check it out uh, and ask questions. Uh, a lot of times I find people will you know, go to the website, but they don't take that extra step. I don't know why they're shy or embarrassed or whatnot, but you know, feel free to email Ron, bother him, let him know where all the good frames are, ask your questions. So I, I really encourage you. I want to thank you for coming out today, Ron. Oh, thanks a lot. I, I could sit here and talk to you for another hour. It, was, <laughs> it went by so quickly. So I really appreciate your coming out, and I look forward to seeing what comes next. Uh, so I mean, I. even <laughs> even after the the next book that comes out. Okay. So I, I want to thank everybody for for tuning in, especially our donors. Thank you very much, and please join us again next week for another episode of Art Show. Thank you very much. <laughs>